I'm here with Sergei Leschenko. Uh, Sergei was a Draper Hill Summer Fellow at CDDRL, the Center on Democracy, Development, and the Rule of Law, back in 2013. At that time, he was a Ukrainian journalist. Uh, he subsequently went into the Ukrainian parliament, and he's been at the center of uh, a lot of the controversy over Ukraine that's now come up in the impeachment hearings uh, for Donald Trump. Uh, he has been accused regularly by many Trump supporters of meddling in American politics uh, because of his early role in revealing the so-called black ledger. Many of these accusations completely misunderstand who is it that's really corrupt in Ukraine and how the um, Ukrainian events have impacted the uh, domestic American events, which I think in the end is very unfortunate for Ukraine. Frank, first of all, thank you for inviting me. Just to explain that Black Ledger is not official document. It's a handwritten 800 pages taken from former Ukrainian President Party office. You cannot use this as official proof just because it's not a bank record. But we know now that some records from Black Ledger connected with official payment from offshore companies for Paul Manafort account in US. So it's totally relevant and FBI proved this. Black Ledger is not about American politics. It's about Ukrainian politics and Ukrainian corruption. Person who made former Ukrainian president successful in political sense, who helped him to be elected as a president, to be re-elected as a prime minister, it's Mr. Manafort. And Manafort was paid from former Ukrainian government, but it was not the real payment for political consultant. It was fraud invoices with uh, fraud documents and, uh, for instance, one of the Black Ledger payment for $750,000. It was payment not for political consultant, but for selling computers from Mr. Manafort to offshore company with a shady account in one of Central Asia countries. Corruption has to be investigated using these records. And American law enforcement institution investigated this. And Mr. Manafort was found guilty by your American legal system. Yeah, by a jury in Virginia. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ukraine was not really the country would like to push investigation about Manafort forward. Ukraine was interested to investigate Ukrainian corruption. And when Mr. Manafort was found in these Black Ledger records, for me, as a former journalist, of course, it was important. But for Ukrainian law enforcement institution, it was not a big deal. He was never prosecuted in Ukraine just because he was not Ukrainian citizen. Mm -hmm. Mr. Manafort, fortunately or unfortunately, was not mentioned in these mm -hmm. 22 pages. If I had his name, of course, I made this name public as well. But I didn't have this name. When I published my 22 pages, it was about Ukrainian politicians, Ukrainian judges, Ukrainian journalists corrupted by previous president Yanukovych. And then three, almost three months later, New York Times published their own story when they proved that Mr. Manafort was also mentioned in another pages, apart from my 22 pages, because as I told, it's about 800 pages, a whole black ledge of unofficial records. After this, Ukrainian law enforcement institution which was responsible for investigation at the time, they proved that Mr. Manafort is really mentioned. When the Republicans say that, uh, well, when, when, the, when the intelligence community in the United States charges the Russians with having interfered mm -hmm. in the election, this is a big event that was sponsored by the Russian government. Of course. They put millions of dollars into it. There's dozens of people working on it. It's a deliberate policy. Uh, of the Russian government to try to affect the outcome of the American election. You, on the other hand, were just Sergei. I mean, you were a member of parliament, but yeah. you were not speaking on, on behalf of the Ukrainian government. You did not represent an effort, a coordinated effort, uh, by anyone on the Ukrainian side to try to influence the outcome of the American election. Yes, it's true that I was elected as a member of parliament by party list of Mr. Poroshenko political force. But I was very critical about Mr. Poroshenko as well. I was very critical about Mr. Yanukovych and his political consultant, Mr. Manafort. Mr. Poroshenko used to work as a minister in Yanukovych government. Paul Manafort proposed his service to Mr. Poroshenko. So it was like more or less the same political class, mm -hmm. political establishment from 90s. I 
provided my 22 pages to newly established anti-corruption bureau. They started some investigation. They made few indictments against Ukrainians. They never indicted Manafort just because Manafort was not Ukrainian citizen. It's important to understand that it's Black Ledger is about Ukrainian corruption and Mr. Manafort was only one of few foreigners mentioned there. He accepted money from Ukrainian government, but this was not registered in US as a lobbyism and it was not it was no taxation of in, in mm -hmm. US and he was found guilty. I believe it's important to explain for part of American political establishment that it's not a good idea to back Mr. Manafort or his behavior in Ukraine just because it was violation of law in US and he was paid by very corrupt president and quite possibly this money was stolen from Ukrainian citizens. I know you were not directly involved in this aspect of the current uh, scandal, uh, but could you say a little bit about uh, Rudy Giuliani's charge that mm -hmm. um, somehow former Vice President Biden interfered in an ongoing corruption uh, investigation of Burisma that would have involved his son Hunter? I want to stress that from the beginning, I was not really happy with the idea to have Hunter Biden in the board of Burisma. It was not the startup company or company with a clean background. My understanding of Mr. Giuliani is that he is trying to be helpful for his client, U.S. President Donald Trump. And to be helpful, he constructed this conspiracy theory with the support of some Ukrainian prosecutors and politicians. Mm -hmm. But if we look into details, into the timeline, mm -hmm. we can see that these events are not relevant, are not connected to each other. And this conspiracy theory is based on like fake ground. For Mr. Zlochevsky, the, 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 the former minister who is the owner of this gas company Burisma, it was not a big deal to invite some Americans because it was done by another Ukrainian oligarchs before, mm -hmm. it's clear that he was trying to buy the name mm -hmm. Biden. We, I mean, in, in an anti-corruption uh, movement, in uh, our uh, independent politician uh, establishment, we were not happy with this idea because it was kind of sabotaging of our efforts to clean mm -hmm. politics and mm -hmm. to fight against corruption. It's important to say that that time American ambassador was also quite critical about this fact and he asked to investigate this organization, Burisma, mm -hmm. not to sabotage investigation, but to move forward with investigation. It was done publicly. Mm -hmm. And all these facts together, they can just destroy this conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. What we know that there is, un unfortunately for conspirators, for mm -hmm. Mr. Giuliani and his friends, there is no facts mm -hmm. that US president interfered in investigation process. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, back to Stanford and uh, you know good luck with this fight against uh, Ukrainian corruption. Thank you very much okay. and please invite more and more Ukrainians to Stanford to create this new Ukrainian politicians which able to fight against corruption and to create new Ukraine. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you.